Okay, so defining A plus setups, right? A plus setups are going to be different for everybody. Uh, but there's normally a few common characteristics that you kind of see amongst the different A setups. And every, you know, everyone trades a little bit differently. Like some are super systematic traders, some are more feel it, some are more, you know, ease into trade, some are more one shot trades, right? There's no, you know, there's no one size fits all there. But um, a lot of people's A setups, there's going to be a lot that are in that, you know, a lot of things that are in common. And the commonalities are that it's either, you know, the risk to reward pr probability ratio is going to be stacked. Uh, it's going to be really, really, really stacked. <laughs> Do you like guacamole? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you like guacamole? Uh, no, but yeah, that, you know, the, the, the ratio between, you know, risk to reward. At least I'm also talking about A plus setup, unlike Joe. What what is that supposed to mean? Shots fired. Um, but yeah, I, I keep getting distracted. Joe, Joe always makes it fun. But um, yeah, the, the ratio between the risk reward and the probability, it's going to be stacked. <laughs> Your power tools. Either it's going to be super probable or the risk reward is just going to be like one to 10, right? One to, one to 10, one to 15, something like that. It's going to be just fucking stacked. And, and that can, you know, and, and that can be an A setup and, or it can be like decent of both, right? Like the risk reward is, you know, like two to one and it's got a 50 to 75%, like, you know, 50, 75, 80% win rate, right? That, that, that would be an A setup. You want to size in on something like that, right? And another commonality of A setups is for like almost every trader, they, the A setup, like real, like, I mean, like real fucking real retail day trader not like some hidden hidden fucking guru like not on fintwit that has a zillion dollar hedge fund that can just fucking you know move shit i'm talking about like the average day you know the average joe trader um a plus setups are not going to happen once a week right uh they're not gonna happen every day likely not even once a week i'm as what i meant for time they're not going to happen every day. They may not even happen once a week. Maybe once every couple of weeks, you'll, you'll get one. In slow markets, you might get one once every three to four. Um, uh, another thing is that it's going to feel obvious. Now, that doesn't mean that the trade is easy. You know, how it sets up is going to be easy. But you're going to see this setup and you're going to be like, I, I need to trade this. Like, you're going to see it and you're going to be like, I, like I, I don't care if you're on the biggest red streak of your career. You see this and you just like, I got to trade it. Like, I just have, like, I mean, like, I have to. You know, it, it's one of those where, you know, even if you said you weren't going to trade again for the rest of the day, you see this and you just, well, I got to trade it. I, and that's kind of how I felt with LLL today, short, pre market. I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, this just pops up out of nowhere. Like, I honestly, I really, really, re like, I really hate the term gift when, when traders like, like it's a very toxic thing when, like when traders on Twitter brag, like it's a way of bragging, right? When traders say, Oh, what a gift. Oh, it was such a gift. This is, Oh, what a gift that was. Oh, oh my God, this trade was such a gift. They're, they're making it seem as if trading is really easy. And I really don't like um, that. You know, when people use that because they overuse the term a lot, like, they, you know, it's a very bragging, oh, look at this gift. I knew exactly what was, what was going to happen because I'm so smart. And I recognize that the market's just handing me money, right? It's a very, you know, I don't know, ostentatious, braggy thing to do. And so I normally hate saying that, but LLL today, when it popped pre-market, like it popped decently on a stock that like really should not be popping decently. <laughs> it really should not be popping decently. Yeah, this stock is fucking dead as fuck. Like that's that's done. That's cooked, right? Th this stock yesterday after that big sell off on 92 million share sell off, right? That's fucking cooked. And you just you don't even expect the stock to fucking pop. And pre market it pops all the way up here. Like, th wow, that was kind of a gift. Kind of, I, you know. I, I think I used the word gimme, but that was kind of a gimme that I even shorted it, and I don't short that much anymore, but. I was just like, well, fuck, I kind of have to. And it was just one of those things. Like, I don't even short anymore. And I said, well, fuck, I kind of have to. And 
Now that doesn't mean that LLL was an A plus setup. It just, I mean, it had that obvious, you know, it had that characteristic to the trade. And a lot of these, you know, your trades are going to include some of these. A plus setups normally include all of them, right? Or most of them, right? And that's what that's what creates the A setup, the A plus setup out of it. Uh, it should feel obvious, right? And so I, I meant I mean to say when I say this that if you feel like you're like fucking on the edge, like, oh, dude, I'm fucking trading the stock. It's a downtrend. Like we, we used to have this one trader in here and you guys probably know who he is. Um, but we used to have this one trader in here and he, I mean, he was trying to convince me that dude, when it's low volume, those are the best ones. And I'm just like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. But the, the point is, I mean, he was trying to reinvent the wheel, right? Like, he was trying to, you know, like buy these low volume stocks. And I'm just like, dude, it's not, you know, you know, it, it trading is not that counterintuitive and the A plus setups are not counterintuitive. They're always obvious, right? Um, if you think that you're trapping somebody else, it, it's not like an A plus setup. Like you're trapped, like you can't be the trapper. An A plus setup can be after some, someone's already trapped. But if you're like trying to trap someone like as a long, like a stock downtrending, you're fucking trying to trap someone or like a stock's just fucking, um, <laughs> you're right here, don't talk about me, that's not good. Or a stock's like pushing, pushing, pushing and you're just, and, and it's like up really strong above view up and you're just going to be like, dude, this, like, I'm going to get the stuff, like this stock's going to stuff here. Well, I got, like, I just know it's going to stuff. Like, Dude, the stock is strong at high volume and pushing and breaking high a day. And you're going to be the dodo that fucking puts shorts up up there being, you know, trying to, trying to really like get that, that one out of 10 fucking counterintuitive stuff, right? That's not, those are not A plus setups, right? It should really feel like a no brainer, you know, and, and kind of like, kind of like, you know, pick is kind of like, I mean, as far as an overextended trend break, these, I like these. I like this for an overextended trend break, right? This is pretty cool, right? Look at how, just look at how, I mean, obvious this breakdown looks. I don't know if it happens with enough time in the market, but I love this for a breakdown trade. Like so obvious, like look at how obvious that is a clear trend break of VWAP of seven. Uh, you know, we're here on day two, you know, after, you know, it's extended from two, right? It's really obvious. It's a breakdown. If you short this and you get squeezed at 725, fucking so be it, right? As far as a breakdown trade, this is kind of an A. Uh, 